Right, hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Anthony Carpen here again for vloggery number two because it's the 2nd of January. Now, you may have, um, for those of you who saw the last video, which is actually the first one, and I was still just as knackered as, <laughs> as I am now because I'm still sleeping off the sleeping tablet from last night, um, I was talking about um, different groups of people, or rather kind of like you and your friends or small social circles uh, in and around for those of you in and around Cambridge are basically getting together and each of you picking a different kind of local issue um, to focus on in the knowledge that somebody else will be covering all of the others or kind of like between you all of the others so it might be one of you focusing on your local school another focusing on the local hospital another focusing on transport somebody else on housing and so on and so forth now I've pulled this book out of my bookshelf. It is called Planners and Preservationists and it's the story of the organisation we now know today as Cambridge Past, Present and Future but back in the late 1920s when it was first formed one of the biggest challenges actually Cambridge faced was um, just unrestricted housing growth um, and the risk of heavy industries, as in massive heavy industries like Oxford got with the Cowley Motor Works, um, setting up shop here. And it was those group, this um, group of, uh, shall we say, planners and preservationists, it wasn't just that group, it was um, the great and the good um, from both town and gown. You had college masters through to local cooperatives um, and uh, local trade union branches, all putting some money aside to buy up places such as Wandlebury or Coton Farm. And that's one of the reasons why we didn't get um, this uh, urban sprawl, if I can put it that way. So for those of you who are interested in um, just amongst other things, keeping tabs on and lobbying about the sort of growth that we're going to get, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, um, then it's the Cambridge, uh, Cambridge Past, Present and Future who are one of the organisations that it's worth joining. And the reason why I say to people, you know, it's actually worth joining these um, organisations is because it, it um, can make the whole thing feel a little bit less overwhelming because you're not on your own. So for example, one of the other organisations that was recently founded in the past couple of years, which I was a founder member of and still am, um, is the Cambridge Bus Users Group. And um, we didn't used to have one until obviously very, very recently. Um, and I'm hoping that this year it really makes it, itself um, felt. Another one is the Cambridge Cycling Campaign, again, of which I'm also a member of. I really should keep tabs on how much money I'm spending on memberships this year or whether there should just be kind of like this one big civic card that we can have which kind of like ticks all of the boxes. Um, I'm also one of the supporters of The Junction um, which for donkey's years has been just up the road from, um, from me and they're celebrating their 30th birthday uh, this year um, and my first club night there uh, was in summer 1995 and we're now in that kind of like very early 2020 so come a long way uh, in that time and so yeah if you um, want to get involved in what they're uh, what they're doing Hillary Cox is leading on a um, project there but for those of you who are um, if I can put it this way more affluently disposed um, do sign up for membership or su uh, supportership because uh, they could really do with, uh, with your help and they're doing some really great things this year. Anyway, I shall finish this one here. See you in episode three.